Yes, well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, He indeed is Lord. He's above it all, and in Him we live and we move and we have our being. And we exist in such a time as this, doing the will of the Father, carrying on with the things that God would have us to carry on with, looking unto Him, the author and the finisher of our faith, to fulfill the plan and purpose that He has for us while we're here on the earth at such a time as this. Even with time, again, being questionable, because the very constructs of what people have thought were reality are now being seen to be false. So now, um, because all time is happening all of the time, and we are eternal present beings, in this moment, put your heart, your attention, your focus, your thinking, everything that you are on the Lord. If you do that, you're going to be in the right space, in the right framework, in the right place where God can quicken, direct, lead, guide, show you. And if you don't do that, you're going to be in a difficult spot because the things that are going on around us right now in the world, in this world, you're going to have trouble. So take heart because God has overcome the world. Take heart because he that began that good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Take heart because um, this is all part of the unfolding of his plan, his will, his desire um, on earth as it is in heaven. So as we pray, God, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as you pray and as you look to him, God is also bringing that to pass. Now, as we do the will of the Father, as we carry on, what you're going to see is you're going to see things continue to manifest in the natural. Because we're spirit beings, but we came into the natural. And we came into this paradigm for such a time as this, such a way as this, um, just the same way that Jesus, the Word was made flesh, so he came into a paradigm like this at such a time as this for his plan, for his manifestation of his plan and purpose. And as we are continuing on and praying for the will of God, doing the things that God would have us to do for the manifestation of the will of God, what do we see? Well, we see the manifestation. Now, sometimes things don't happen the way that you thought they would. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> sometimes, because we have a habit of wanting to figure everything out and also wanting to have our own private interpretation of what it is that we think God has done, should do, how we should do things, because... That is part of the fallen nature, which is basically wanting to be God, wanting to be the judge, <clears throat> wanting to set the standard, wanting to decree, and and you know that that world is, um, <laughs> Lord, my will be done, not yours, because that's the way that the world wants to work. That's the way that the humanist wants to work. In the kingdom, it's Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. We submit our will to His will, we submit our plan and purpose to His plan and purpose, we um, give ourselves over for the manifestation of the kingdom and God's plan. But in the world, the way the world works is it's the manifestation of its own system and it's the manifestation of human interest and what, what you'll see in that place is that Basically, people will try to use God to get what they want, what they think they want in the world. 
And they'll also have their own interpretation. Well, this means this. This means this. This is the way that God has to do this. This is the 144,000. This is, you know, you see what I'm saying, right? So you can, you can end up with so many different places. This is not a new thing, by the way. This was all part of, of the, um, all part of the early, uh, the early days of the church. How many people had all of their ideas when, when Christ was showing up, when God was being manifest on the earth, they had all of their ideas of who the Savior would be. <laughs> he was going to be this conquering king that was going to help them put down Roman occupation. And that was, and so they were waiting for somebody to lead them into that fight. That's what they were looking for. So, because, and you know why? There was, uh, so look look and see, in the scriptures it talks about other people that had showed up before Jesus, that they thought were all, that all said they were going to be somebody. There was one guy that showed up, led a rebellion, they all went out into the desert, came to nothing after he, that guy was killed. So they're talking about this when, when the rulers of the synagogue were talking about Jesus and what to do with him. Now, people had an idea for a certain manifestation. And when that programming is put in place, what happens is, is the people that know what the program is, they will play to the program to build and to gain your confidence. So if you believe, because you've been programmed and you've accepted the program, that there's a certain way that God's supposed to do certain things, then somebody will come along and play into that. Write a book about it. Sell you a, sell you something along those lines. And in the end, what's what's the end result of that? What's the end manifestation of that? Zero. Except they sold you a book. <clears throat> Except they told you what your itching ears wanted to hear. And the end result of it was, you went down a dead track a dead end for a short window that amounted to nothing. And then you carry on and you go to the next one for the next round of programming and the next round of programming. So, you know, we have a habit, unless you're on the path, unless you're seeking the path of truth, if you're seeking the path of truth, then when something doesn't seem right, you're, you're going to call it for that. When something isn't right, you're going to... Uh, you're not going to go for that because something's just off. It's off with who you are. It's off with who God's called you to be. And it's off with what's within you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not some external manifestation in this world where God has already promised us saying, in this world, you're going to have trouble, but take heart for I've overcome the world. So... Yeah, I mean we've we've got we've got all kinds of programming around us, but what is God doing? You know, what is God up to? Because you can listen to all sorts of voices, but who hears the still small voice of the Spirit of the Living God? You know, when Elijah was you know in the mountain in the in, in the cleft of the rock. And all those things came. There's the fire that came. There's the wind that came. There's the earthquake that came. All these big manifestations. But it was that still, small mm -hmm. voice. That was what, you know, it, that was where God was speaking from. So, <clears throat> who hears that voice of God? Who will take the time to listen? Who will put down their own personal... Um, their own personal agendas in order to have what God wants. You know, unmet expectations is one of the greatest causes of misery. We create an expectation and then when it's not filled we get upset and angry and mad because our expectations weren't met. 
And where do those expectations come from? <laughs> Who put those out? You know, you know, so those things were built into you by the world. And also they played on that fallen part of human nature, the earth suit that we live in, um, that we need to be able to be in this paradigm, but it's flawed and, and um, it's, it's got a mind of its own, which you have to bring that under subjection is what Paul wrote about. But um, yeah, you know, we, we look to that. <clears throat> You know, we, we look to, uh, to okay, how are we going to walk this thing out and listen to the voice of God? How will we walk this out His way? Because God wants our attention. You know, he, and that's got to be something which we willingly and willfully bring to Him. You have to want that. You have to want to, um, to walk with Him in spirit and in truth. It's not going to be something where you're, where you're going to... Um, do it on your own terms. It's not going to be something where you're going to be the author and the finisher of your own faith. It's something where you turn yourself over to God on His terms and allow Him to lead you, Him to guide you, Him to restore you, Him to show you, Him to be the one that's in charge. You know, in the end, what we do, we do what we actually believe. If you truly believe something, that's going to be what you do. You know, so, so sometimes, you know, we, we talk about what we believe, but then people live in a contradiction because we believe one thing, but we, and we say we believe one thing, but then our actions are different. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. What you do is going to be a reflection of your love. Not if you love me, you'll say it. He never said that. If you love me, you'll, you'll say it. Yes, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But what's going to happen in your pursuit? What are you going to... Who are you going to be? What's the actual manifestation of that love? Because it's easy to talk. For Peter, it was easy to talk. But when his life was put on the line, that's when he walked away, ran away. Now... In that, in that place, we do have a change that took place. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, who leads and guides you into all truth, who teaches you what you need to know, who builds you up in the truth, He also quickens you and empowers you to do the things that you cannot do apart from Him. Jesus said that you know that you need that no man should teach you, because when the Spirit of God comes upon you, He will teach you all things. He will show you all things. And God makes all things known unto us because we are His friends. We're not just His disciples. We are His friends. God teaches us, shows us, leads us, guides us because we are His friends. And we're His disciples. And we're the ones that are um, the manifestation of the Word right now on the earth. We're the manifestations of the Spirit. Because Christ said, it's better for you that I go. When I go, I'll send the Comforter. He's going to be with you. He's going to be in you. So, God is doing that work in us. God is doing that work through us. But we have a responsibility to walk it out. 
and you know this thing about the attention there's there's definitely this thing in the world that seeks so much to try to get hold of your attention tries so hard to get a hold of your consciousness it's always working for that because if it has your mind it can get the rest of you where your head you know that's that that um wrestling coach I had where the head goes the body will follow you know where the head goes the body will follow where where if you start it begins in the mind right and once that mind is captured then it, it turns into your thoughts and it turns into what it is that you end up doing and it then then you act on those thoughts and once you start acting on those thoughts, then you're going to start living that out. And your life is going to be a manifestation of all of that. <sighs> Amidst all of it that God has us in, there's still peace. There's still peace for the child of God. There's still... You can have that peace amidst external turmoil. You can have that, but it also comes on God's terms. You know, you can be at peace when you know that you've just done the thing that God gave you to do. You can be at peace when you're allowing Him to lead and guide you, because now, what more is there? What more is there? What more is required when you're just fulfilling the thing that God has for you to do? Nothing. You let Him lead you. You let Him guide you. You let Him direct you by His Spirit. The rest is going to be fine. The place we get in trouble is when we go apart from Him. Apart from Him, you can do nothing, is what Jesus said. Apart from Him... We can do nothing. But in Him, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You want Him to lead you. You want Him to guide you. You want Him to show you. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenging time for sure. It's a challenging time to be alive. It's a challenging time to be one of God's children on the earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will not say in any way that this is not um, a troublous, troublesome, challenging time. But you have the victory in Christ. And we were not left alone. And God gave us instruction. He gave us His Word. He has put people there to help and support us along the way. Um, you know, and He's got your back. He's got your back. So, the fact that He's got your back, you know that you can go forward in something. The fact that he has your back, you know that while he leads you and guides you, he's also going to teach you and show you and quicken you and encourage you. You know, it is a beautiful thing when you know that the, the one that created it all has you. And he's with you. But the world does work to discourage us. The world does work to get us off our, our, our track. To try to take our attention. Absolutely. That's going to be... It's going to be trying to do that your entire existence. So you, you've got to make some decisions and some choices in those lines. To not allow for that to happen. 
take take authority over um, the different things that are around you. Be a good steward over your life and your experiences. If you know that something is not um, right, you can't walk away. And you know, if you know something is right, you can't embrace and build that out. In all things, trust. In all things, look to the author and the finisher of your faith. You know, things are moving so fast geopolitically, sometimes I even wonder if it's worth talking about them. Except, um, just to say that God is involved, very much involved, and uh, there's things that we can and should be praying about and engaging in, and um, and so in that, in that way, just know that there's a role to play in everything that's going on around us at all times. Because if God's brought it to your attention, it's a good chance that He also wants you to pray about things. It's a good chance that He also wants you to um, to take notice and to proclaim the will of God. So you listen, you hear, and then you pray. And you pray, and then you hear. And then you do. Let God show you. Ah, you know, sometimes I do, there is a lot, you guys, there is a lot. It's been a lot, it's been a journey, Um, God willing, I pray that we, we fulfill this whole thing well, that we accomplish the purpose that God has for us. I do, I do pray for that. I do hope for that. Um, I hope that, you know, that, that as we continue on and go through all of this, that, you know, we will, f- like Jesus, when he was leaving this life, he said, it is finished. Um, I, my prayer is that we finish our race and we finish it off well and um, in such a way that it brings glory to God and... Um, delights his heart I I pray for that I hope for that I want that for all of us but also too there are real challenges there are real challenges to all of this and And sometimes, you know, all of us will all struggle with the reality of what we face here. Because you're in a body. We are affected. You know, you're affected. If there's um, attacks against your mind that come from uh, one of so many different potential places, you're affected by it. If there's attacks against your your health, you're affected by it. You know, it, it... it's, it's a little bit tough to pray when you're in pain. Right? Okay. So we do get affected. But we also continue to persist. We continue to trust. We've been given an example. We've been given a hope. We've been, been given um, someone that has gone before in Christ and shown us the way. So we do that. We trust Him. We trust Him, and we trust the way that He shows us. Yeah. Oh, I tell you. In one way, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of this coming to a conclusion in God's time and in God's way yeah there is that because um, 
because there is a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. And I would love to see the full manifestation of the kingdom of God and the enemy put down. Because while the enemy continues to do what he does, there's so much pain and, and suffering and struggle and unnecessary hardship because of the way that it is. So, yeah, I look forward to a wrap-up. But, um, if any way possible, I would like to also see people be spared. Because I do believe things can, can wrap up and things can be fulfilled, and they can be fulfilled in different ways. So in whatever way that people can be spared from the horrors that are very much likely to happen, I hope for that. But nevertheless, God, your will be done. God's will be done. Pray, pray for each other, you guys. Pray for one another. Spend time in prayer. Read the word. Speak the truth. You know, don't, don't, don't let the world break you down to a place where you can't speak. All right? It's gonna try, but just keep speaking. Keep doing the things that God has for you to do. Keep, keep engaged in the word. You've got to, because. That, that's what the world is working so hard to do. Because, uh, all right, so on one side, it's trying to take over your consciousness. So it puts all the efforts in that messaging. At the same time, it can't have people speaking truth out there. Because if they speak the truth and they're out there, it shows another way. So they try to marginalize those people, attack those people, disenfranchise those people, frustrate those people. You guys know for Human 2020, one of the most uh, popular interviews we did was with uh, Jakari Jackson. And they removed the entire channel. They removed the entire channel. There was no violation of terms of service. There was no anything. They just took the whole thing down. Because... They can't have those messages sitting there and people listening and waking up. So, the world is not going to... Um, it's got too much... It's got everything to lose, actually. I mean, it's already lost, but it's got everything to lose even in real time. So, that's where they're coming from. So, just understand that. And realize, though, too, it doesn't matter because God's given us a mission, a reason... A, uh, an equipping a calling and you know a direction and he wants us to move he wants us to do his will so as you love him obey him as you move forward and trust him he that began that good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. He's not going to leave you high and dry. He's going to be there with you. In your distress, reach out to Him. In your struggle, ask Him. In your confusion, when the enemy tries to bring confusion towards you, just refocus and bring everything back before God. As you do that... You'll also see Him take over and give you clarity where there was none, a hope where you didn't have any, a way forward where it seemed to be no way. He'll fight for you in ways that you never even imagined, and He's going to give you a solution where there was no thought or no idea for even a possibility of one. It's all good, you guys. Ah, so, we love you guys. We really do. And we do pray for you. Um, 
and I know, I know, I know the enemy works hard to frustrate you all. So I just, I pray that your frustrations would be minimal. I pray that God would quicken you in the times when the enemy attacks you and show you the way forward so that you can walk in it. And I look forward to the ways that God is going to bless you as you trust in Him. I look forward to the ways that God is going to manifest manifest Himself in your life as you look to Him and you trust Him. And, you know, you... Listen, if you try to work within your... within everything that makes sense to you, you're, there's only so far you're going to go because ourselves are limited apart from Christ. But when you let God direct you, He's going to lead you and take you out all the way to the edge, and then you're going to go past that in Him. And that's where you're going to see what He can do. And that's where you're going to find out and you're going to learn. you got to be open for that. When you're open for that, you're, you're moving into a place where now you can see and experience the miraculous. But you got to be willing. And He's going to bring you up against all those sacred cows that you have in your mind and there's going to be a challenge on those. All those sacred cows, all those things that you held on to so dear, God's going to bring you up right against those things and in the process of that, you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to trust the way the Spirit of God speaks to you or are you going to go forward and continue, or I should even say go, to, go forward. Are you going to go back to the conventions and what's familiar and what you've been taught and what you've been trained in and ignore what God shows you? My encouragement is whatever God says, just go with that. Whatever it is that He leads and guides you to do, just do it. Because in doing it, you're going to see the manifestation of His plan and purpose in Jesus' name. So... with all of it that's going on around you know he's in control we love you guys God bless you drop us an email faithmix at gmail.com we always love to hear from you um, keep on keeping on you know the 20 on 20 will be later this month um, keep praying pray for the, the end of human trafficking pray for the end of modern day slavery so much of what we're seeing is God responding to uh, our prayers and unveiling and revealing and showing what's all behind the scenes. The enemy's freaking out, but that doesn't matter. We continue to persist. Do that thing that God gave you to do, and you're going to see the miraculous because we're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. Always remember that. All right, God bless you guys. We love you. Talk to you again sometime soon. God bless you.